This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about solids, CE 3303. This is a problem that was on exam number four, involving buckling, critical loading, sort of column analysis. What we've got here is a rectangular steel member kind of horizontally, like a horizontal column. Um, span, its length span is nine feet. Unsupported length is nine feet. We have a axial compressive load, P, down here at this end. I've got a, two of my three axes shown here. Y is vertical up. X is longitudinal along the axis of the member. It's uh, made out of steel. It's Young's modulus is 29 million, 29 to 10 to the 6 psi. Support conditions are kind of, um, we've got a standard fixed condition down here at this end on the right. At this end we have uh, two rollers and you were told in the problem that these rollers, the support prevents displacement in the Y direction only. That means it can't go anywhere up or down. But, by implication, we would say, well, it can move in and out of the plane of the board, which would be in the Z direction. So, I'm given also the cross section of this thing looks like this, it's one inch by two inch where Y is the vertical axis, same as there Z is really the axis coming out of the plane and it's this axis cut through the, sec the cross section remembering that for a rectangle IZ is uh, it's BH cubed over 12 so in the Z direction for bending about the Z axis which is what IZ is referring to it's base times height 1 cubed divided by 12, it's 0.166, repeating inches to the fourth. For bending about the y-axis, just turn it on its side, and this is b, and this is h, so it's 1 times 2 cubed over 12, which is 0.666 inches to the fourth. Okay. The first part of the problem was determine the force, axial force P, to make the member buckle by moving in the horizontal Z plane. That means it's going to buckle in the Z plane, which is the one coming out of the board. So it's going to buckle in or out of the board. So the support conditions, as we explained up here, for buckling in the Z direction, it's not restrained at this end for buckling in the Z direction. So that means it's free at this end to just move around and it's fixed at this end. The free fixed support condition, the effective length factor K is 2.0. Also we got to then think about buckling in the Z direction. Buckling is really just a word, another word for bending. Buckling in the Z direction means coming out of the plane, means bending about the y-axis, which involves IY. So look at that cross-section. You can see if it buckles in the z-direction, it's going to be bending about the y-axis. So then I use Euler's load. The critical buckling load is pi squared di over kl squared. Plug in the numbers. This is IY, 0.666. The effective length factor for this sort of buckling or bending is 2.0. Checking my units, I got pounds per inch squared. Up here for E, I got inches to the fourth for I, inches squared for this, this length, when I square this distance. Works out to be pounds, so it's 4,090 pounds. Uh, similarly, Part two, determine the P axial force to make the member buckle by moving in the vertical Y plane. Look at the support conditions first. We've, t we've been told that support prevents displacement in the Y direction only. So it can't 
move, but it can rotate. So that's a pin. It's still fixed at that end, so it's pinned, fixed. The effective length factor is 0.7. Similarly to up here, buckling in the y direction, up and down, means bending about the z axis. If it's going to buckle in the y direction, it's going to bend about the z axis. So we're going to use IZ in our formula. Substituting those numbers into this equation, this is IY, I mean this is IZ, and this is the effective length factor for this buckling, 0.7. It's 8,346 pounds.